Josh Cast, dun 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 dun. Oh, it's the podcast that you thought was dead. Dun 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 dun. dun. Oh, mostly because I also thought it was dead. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Oh, and yet it's still here. Dun 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 dun. dun. Josh Cast, dun 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 dun. dun. Josh Cast. All right. Um, welcome to another exciting episode of Josh Cast. Um, I was going to uh, try to re- overhaul this podcast so that I was only doing, you know, carefully scripted material that was uh, the best comedic uh, gems I could possibly share. And uh, that lasted all of two episodes. And then um, I lost the will to continue, uh, which I c- could be the title of my biography. Um, and I'm having a bit of a, uh, here, how do I put this? I know that anything I'm doing, whether it's a podcast or tweeting or whatever, that that there should be an altruistic goal, that there should be something specific that I'm trying to say and that I should, you know, not, not, it just shouldn't be about making people laugh. I should have a mission. I should want to make people laugh and think. And the fact is, all I really want to do is be able to sell tickets. That's all I want. I just, I want people to buy tickets to see. I want people to uh, believe, th- say that I am funny, but in a, in a sophisticated sort of way. Oh, he's fun- he makes us laugh, um, and he's intellectual, so we'll buy a ticket to see him. And and that I think that's pretty much it. And uh, to, for enough people to be able to buy tickets to see me to where I can afford health care, which I think I'll have to make more than Kevin Hart at this point. And so the primary that's the primary reason I'm doing this podcast is that I'm hoping it's going to take off. It's going to go viral. And uh, you're going to listen to it and say, I could see this man live. I could... Uh, uh, is it is it too much if I say if I call myself a man? Do you think I'm being too presumptuous? I'm not sure, but that's that's what my hope is. That's that's what I'm looking to that's what I'm looking to do, and I and I and I feel guilty about that because as as a dare I, as an artist, I feel like I should have something very palpable to say, and basically all I'm saying is pay to see me. That's that's my artistic message. Pay to see me live, please. Pay to see me go up and talk. Pay to watch me talk. Pay to watch me talk. I'm a great talker. There are a lot of other people. There, everyone talks. But, you know, who really talks the talk? I suppose I'm that person. Transition. 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 New thought. New thought. New thought. So we've got the health care thing happening. Uh, there was a health care uh, vote to do the repeal of Obamacare, the skinny repeal, which is a very, uh, I, if it's skinny, it's a healthy repeal as opposed to the obese appeal, I suppose. Um, here's the thing. I don't understand really how the current health care system works, and neither does anyone else. Uh, I don't understand what the repeal plan is. I don't think anyone else understands either. Nobody seems to know what they're doing. Uh, and that's, you know, I, I feel I should be more concerned about that. And then, the, uh, you know, I, I hear, I, all I hear is, hor- when it comes to health care, all I hear is horrible things. I hear from one side of the argument, Obamacare is horrible, it's going to implode, it's terrible, it's going to be, it's, it's the worst possible health care system you could imagine. And then on the other end, I hear, oh my God, it saved so many people, we have to keep it, we have to keep it, it's the best possible thing we have, this other option uh, is not going to work either, and I, uh, I don't know which is true. Uh, the only conclusion I can reach is that what they're voting on is basically they're deciding, you know, Am I going to die a little later or later? I think that's all we're voting on. Is my death going to be slow and painful or a little faster and painful? I think I think that's really the only difference from what I can see. And maybe that's just me being positive. Transition, 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 transition. Uh, here's something that happened in the news. 
Uh, oh, isn't that wild? So, uh, somebody snapped a photograph of George Clooney's new babies. And George Clooney was very angry about this, and he said he's going to sue, and he is going to go after whoever did this. And I was just thinking about how, you know, what possesses somebody to take a camera and break onto these people's personal property and take a picture. And then it occurred to me, uh, money, that's what it is. Money, pure and simple. Because I think one of those photos, I don't know how much the photographer got for it, but I've, I mean, I've heard that some of these photos fetch up to one million, two million, three million dollars for one photograph. And uh, as someone who works, you know, while I don't think it's cool to take a picture of George Clooney's babies like that, on the other hand, if it's a million dollars, you know, sooner or later we're going to see them. I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying go out there and take a picture of George Clooney's babies. Don't do that. It's a violation of privacy. It's wrong. It's bad. It's horrible. Um, but if George Clooney were working in an office 40 hours a week and uh, not a big star, and then suddenly got the opportunity to take a picture of a famous person's babies for a million dollars. Um, no, you know what? Now that, I, now that I say that out loud, I don't think George Clooney would do that because he's George Clooney. Other celebrities might, but not George. He's a class act. He really is a class act. I was, gonna, I was all set to uh, go somewhere with that, and, and I didn't. And you know the other thing, too, that I, I want to just confess is um, I really want to see a picture of his kids. I really do. Because he's beautiful. His wife is beautiful. The kids must be beautiful. I have to. I must. I have to know. I have to see. Uh, or, paradoxically, if his kids turn out to be ugly, as horrible as it is for them, won't, won't I feel wonderful? Oh, God. Man. You know, it just, it, ah, someone else is miserable who shouldn't be. That's, I could commiserate with that. That would make my day. Um, so, you know, George, if you're listening, which I'm sure you are, uh, know that, that while I do not at all agree with what was done with your children, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting some out of it. You know, just, I'm saying, I'm saying it. Things aren't all bad. Look on the bright sides, George. Look on the bright side. Transition, 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 transition. So if you're just tuning into my life, know this. I lost my virginity when I was 32 years old. Um, to date, I have only had one partner. And why I'm saying this to you is I just want you to have a, a frame of reference so that when I perhaps launch into a tirade about how Star Trek V is um, woefully underestimated as a film. You can say to yourself, ah, that's why he's obsessing over this. Okay, gotcha. He's just trying to drown out the loneliness around him. Got it. I Just, just so you're aware, because context is important. It's critical. It's everything. I'm not trying to date right now. I'm not going out and actively dating. Uh, I've only been on three first dates my entire life, and they were all horrible, miserable experiences. And at the end of the third date, I said to myself, okay, I've, I've, all right, I've done that. I'm treating, I am treating romance the way that irritated tourists treat going onto an island as part of a cruise. They're there for a day, they walk around, they have a snow cone, they go, okay, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen Haiti, I'm done. But we're good. Is Haiti a good example? I hear beautiful things about Haiti. I, uh, maybe Haiti's not a good example. It should be a good example. Listen, let's, let's be positive about Haiti. I hear it's a great vacation place. I fully, fully endorse Haiti. Let's get Haiti back to Haiti. I'm not sure if that's going to help Haiti. But I don't, I'm not dating. I'm not interested in dating at all. Um, 
I mean, I am. It's not that I'm not interested in dating. I'm interested in dating. I am. Um, I just want to skip the dating part of it. I want to get to the one year into the relationship after the dust is settled, after the excitement, after the oh we're in love. You know, the just the okay we're coexisting. And it's in an ideal situation. You know, she doesn't hate me. I don't hate her. We don't yell at each other. We just share space, uh, have a laugh occasionally. Um, if if she wants sex, she can always send me an email, and I'll work it into the schedule. And uh, I will never bother her for sex, not at all. I would. Why would I do that? Why would I ruin someone's day by asking for sexual relations? Um, it's totally up to her. If she wants to use me, that's fine, or not. That's fine too. I'll make it work. Uh, that's. I think that's where I'd like to jump to. The whole falling in love, Romeo and Juliet. Ah, who needs it? I probably need it. I'm probably in denial. 19 different layers of denial right now. I don't know if this podcast is accomplishing my goals. Because uh, I was doing the podcast regularly for a year, but probably not promoting it too well. Uh, and, um, well, definitely not promoting it too well. Otherwise, when I'm saying, are you, when I'm saying, do you hear me? There would be more than, it would just be more than a rhetorical argument uttered into an iPhone. Siri has heard, the same Siri unit has heard every one of my podcast episodes, and somehow this phone is still functioning. That's fascinating to me. This is the end of the podcast, the end of the podcast, and the children sing and the children play. This is the end of the podcast.